Hey, what's up? This is Corey Glenn, and uh, I'm going to switch it up today, and instead of posting, you know, the normal stuff I do, which is dentistry and dental technology, I thought I'd share a project I was uh, working on here recently. So, this was kind of born out of my my uh, superpower of losing guitar picks. So, I, I play a few different instruments, and, you know, most nights I'll go ride the golf cart down by the lake and, and sit there and play for a little while, but it never fails. I always am able to lose my picks. And so I just had the, the wild hair one day to, to download a guitar pick off, uh, you know, one of the, the free STL sites. And that was great and everything. And you can, you know, 3D print as many of them as you want. But then I kind of got to thinking, well, what if I could customize this? I just happened to see some of those custom picks on, uh, on social media that people are selling for like 80 bucks. And I thought, man, I could, I could do something like that. So... Uh, I'll just show you what I did, and uh, hopefully you see some of the value in maybe these scanners, 3D printers, and then also just uh, some free CAD programs such as Mesh Mixer, which is the one I mainly use. And so what I did is I just grabbed a, a standard pick, and I used some of my dental impression material and just squirted it around my fingers. You could even just squirt it on your fingers and then just grab the pick. But really what I was trying to do is just record onto this pick my exact finger positions of how I would like it to, to be oriented when I'm playing. And so I let the impression material sit up, uh, took it out, trimmed off a little bit of the excess, and then I've got several desktop scanners, again, related to, to dental work. And so I just fixated that onto my desktop scanner, uh, in this case, which was the Shining 3D uh, desktop scanner, and just made a scan of that. And so this is actually some video of that being done you see that's the shining scanner and it's just going around it's taking a bunch of images and then it's constructing this 3d model all right so once i had done that uh, i also just peeled off the impression material and i got just a raw scan of the pick itself uh, which you know allowed me to to create a solid pick in between my fingers and so this is what I ended up with. When I trimmed away the excess on that mesh, you can see this is the, the standalone pick. And then you can see my thumb pad overlaying on uh, this one side. And then you can see how my pointer finger is oriented on the opposing side. All right, so using that, I'm going to now try to model a more customized pick that would rest in my, my fingers easily, hopefully be well balanced. And so this is kind of what I came up with. I thought, you know, I've got big bare hands and, uh, you know, sometimes the picks are a little too thin to, to hold. So I thought it might be helpful to really thicken up the portion where my, my fingers are actually holding it, but still taper that down to this, you know, really thin, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millimeter standard guitar pick uh, thickness. And you can see that I've created those depressions where my thumb and my pointer finger rest. And so it's kind of got this odd looking shape. Uh, but I thought, well, let's print it and see what it feels like. And so took it over to my Sprint Ray 3D printers. Um, you know, a lot of the custom picks I see people making online, they're using like the DLP printers. I'm sorry, not DLP, the uh, FDM printers, which, uh, you know, use the filaments. And while that's all fine and good, you know, I would worry about the strength of those picks. Plus, they're really slow. Uh, so I, I like the DLP type printers that use the resin and the projected light to do this. But uh, if you are going to print some of these, orient them with the back of the pick facing down toward the print bed. And that way you won't have, you know, any rough areas where you're having to remove supports on your picking surface. Because... That's one thing I found is that you do need this edge to be extremely smooth or you end up catching as you strum through strings and things. All right, so we printed that and this was my first prototype. And so you can see it, it really fits well in between the fingers here. Uh, it's actually balanced enough that you know you could just set it on your pointer finger and it just stands there. You don't have to, to hold it with both fingers. So really liked the grip and everything i ended up playing around with the scaling a bit and making some bigger and smaller until I, I really found what i liked and then once i had the overall shape i wanted i thought well we need to add some grip to this thing and so using a mesh mixer which is just a free cad program uh, i went ahead and started adding some uh, various shapes to it and so all i did was import a cylinder 
and then I scaled that and kind of stretched it and now I'm just orienting that kind of on my thumb pad and what I'm doing now is I, I don't want that whole shape sticking way up so I'm offsetting my pick by 0.7 millimeters and then I'm taking that surface and doing a boolean intersection with the, the little cylinder designs that I've made and because I do tend to lose picks all the time I like the idea of having a hole through it so I can actually put these on my my keychain so if I'm ever in a pinch and I need a pick I've just got one on the keychain so uh, that's why I put the hole there but I really ended up liking this one so the other option I came up with for uh, a grip design and this was just kind of you know done spur of the moment so I could probably come up with cooler stuff but again this was just experimenting but I brought in a two millimeter cylinder and then duplicated it joined it to the first duplicated that and so these things all get evenly spaced and I'm, I'm basically making a grid of these little two millimeter cylinders and then I just played around with the orientation of that uh, laying it across the the thumb and, and forefinger pad area got it where I wanted it and then just did a boolean subtraction of those uh, cylinders from my guitar pick and so that made another little cool uh, grip that you know looks neat and so uh, that was basically the final custom picks that I ended up coming up with and uh, you can see this one has more of a standard pick shape and what I found was that you know my my hand was most comfortable when it was oriented a little bit flatter to the face of the guitar or the mandolin uh, which put my pick kind of facing this way instead of uh, perpendicular to the string. So I made this other design where I kind of just swooped back the, the pick tip and that put me at a little uh, more easy angle to the strings when I was playing. Uh, so you can see the STL files and then the 3D prints. You know, these things cost maybe three to four cents a piece to print. So it's a really economical option and uh, you know I can just print hundreds of them and have them laying everywhere uh, to my wife's dismay so that I'm, I'm never without a pick I've always got one and so then I started playing with some other designs so uh, i would seen some of the custom pick builders on on uh, YouTube that would make these big thick wedge shaped picks uh, which I'd never tried once so I just uh, kind of mocked up that shape and then put another ellipse grip pattern on that with the hole in the middle and actually this one ended up being one of my favorite picks that I designed it's a it's a standard guitar pick shape but it's probably 20 percent larger again just for my my hands and then it's got a lot of thickness to it like you can see in this cross section uh, so I ended up liking that one and then this was another cool one that I made uh, I happen to have a rattlesnake skin of a uh, rattlesnake that was run over on our driveway at our farm and so of course I've scanned that so I've got an STL of that rattlesnake pattern and so it was really really easy to do this one I just uh, basically overlaid a pick onto this shape and I, I mirrored it and then did a boolean intersection and that gave me a rattlesnake guitar uh, pick with the grip up here and then of course the part where you're strumming is actually smooth down here because you don't want those uh, rough edges on that but I really like this pick too boy you talk about stay and put in your fingers this one's really nice and then I just uh, I kind of went overboard and I had one other idea so a lot of times when I'm playing mandolin and I, you know I'm out in the dark on the golf cart uh, riding around uh, you know I use a capo pretty often and so I always found that I'm setting down this black capo on my black golf cart at night and I just can't find the thing you know obviously I have a, a pretty big problem with losing stuff and so what I did is I scanned my mandolin capo and then again brought that in a mesh mixer and I just modeled this little uh, device uh, to accept it and so basically what it's got is you know I measured my guitar or my mandolin strap I knew the width and the thickness and so uh, there's a slot for the the strap to pass all the way through and then I've got these holes and so the holes are just designed where my my mandolin capo can go in there and it just clamps onto that and it's on the strap right there beside my right hand my picking hand so it's it's very handy it's right there where I want it and then kind of as an afterthought I thought well maybe I can keep up with some picks if I put a pick holder on this and so 
uh, also created this little pick holder on the side of it. So, you know, it's uh, these are not any things where I'm saving money or uh, anything like that, but it was kind of a fun project. And, you know, if you're new to CAD design and uh, want to learn to manipulate 3D models and stuff, this could be a really easy uh, initial project for you to play around with. So anyway, that's uh, that's all I got. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in the, the STLs or anything, just uh, reach out to me, leave a comment. And uh, if there's enough demand for it, I might put it up on one of the little STL sites where people can download it. All right, thanks.